live streaming. Um, all right. So welcome, YouTube. Uh, let me open my other tab so I can see the comments. So welcome, YouTube. Today is Clear Vision Wednesday, and today's topic is um, vision games. So I have the title like frustrated with eye exercises or tired of eye exercises because exercise, is, you know, we think of oh, exercise, you know, like every morning after exercise, I'm supposed to do this and that. And vision improvement is really not about eye exercises. I prefer to call them real exercises or practices or games. By the way, I'm Claudia Mühlenweg. For those of you that don't know me, um, I'm a holistic vision improvement teacher and the founder of, um, or the creator of the Natural Clear Vision Method. And today, again, as, as I said, we have 10 different vision games. There's a bazillion more that you can invent. And I think once you understand the principles of the things that we're doing, you will find the whole world to be a vision playground. So um, I, you need some tools, but don't worry about that right now. If you're watching live and you don't know, you can watch the replay. And any of these tools can be modified to be something else, really, most of them at least. So the very first one, um, some of you might know this one, it's called Color of the Day. Oh, and before we begin, um, ideally you do all these without your glasses on or your contacts. And for some of the techniques that we're gonna be doing, you wanna have at least, like the slight blur or a little bit of blur or clarity, but you don't want to be a complete blur. But for the first one, that one is fine. You can do that if you don't do this when you're driving without glasses, please. So color of the day is as simple as it sounds. You pick a color and you look around. Let's do this right now, everybody. Pick a color and then look around your room, what you see in that color. And if, it's, if you don't have glasses on, you might not know what that object is, but you can see the color. So I am picking, um, I'm picking, I don't know, I'm picking pink and I see lots of pink things. I see a little nose card and, you know, we don't want this video to be too long, but look around. And this is great when you're driving, when you're on the train, when you're on the bus, when you're driving, you obviously pay attention to the traffic, but you will see this kind of, and you obviously have your glasses on if you need them, but you will see things that you've never noticed before. And another version of this is shapes, looking at shapes. So you can say today I'm looking for circles, I'm looking for triangles. The color is a little easier, especially without glasses because color is like the first thing that our eyes see, it's like pops out. So that's the first practice that I recommend. Color of the day keeps you in the present moment. The only time where we can actually see is the present. And oftentimes we walk about our day and we are thinking about the future or the past. All right, that's number one. You don't need any tools. And by the way, this is all these things are great to do with kids. With kids, you can play that version. I spy something pink, and then you look around. And so, you know, and if you have a friend or partner, you can, you know, let's all be kids and have fun. So you can play this version of that too, like I spy something in whatever color. And then you look around and you notice all these things. So, all right. So that was kind of basically being in the present moment, being aware of your surroundings. That's kind of first game. And now we're getting into some games and they will address different aspects of vision. Something that's called central fixation, central focus, knowing that where you look, you see things best compared to where you don't look. They also work uh, in near vision or far vision. We can do these at different distances, at least some of these. And then also that idea of oppositional movement to your own movement. So the very first one that I call that scan and count. So this is a great, practice to do at a distance where your vision is a little blurry, but again, not like completely washed out. So if you're nearsighted and you can do this with weaker glasses or your glasses on or without glasses, if you're nearsighted, you would, let's say, look for uh, windows on a house, or you would look for trees on the horizon and you literally scan, scanning meaning you're moving your attention and you count. And I got this little object here for, for if you want to do this at the near point, if you're far sighted and you want to do this close up, I got this little cute chain of chickens uh, at uh, a store here in, the, in, the, in the America. And it's, you know, you can do that with anything. The other thing I have here is a little place map. You can count the stitches, right? See the other little stitches on there. So it, you can, anything in your life you can use. But basically what you're doing, the idea of this is, and I'm going to use the chickens here because I can't turn my computer around and show you the palm trees in the distance. Basically, Wherever you look, whatever chick you look at here in this example, you see this one better than all the other ones. And the farther away they are from the one that you're looking at, the, the blurrier or the worst scene they are. And basically the way this works, you can do this with letters on the eye chart. 
you just count like one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, and then you automatically moving your attention down when you're counting. So this is something, again, you can do with lots of things. You can do that with, um, you know, fences, like the picket fences, you can count those bars or you can count windows on a house or whatever, whatever you, rocks in the garden, whatever you, you comes across your way. So scan and count is uh, game number two. And you don't really have to count if you don't want to, but it's fun with kids too, right? It's fun to play this. Um, the second um, practice, this one is definitely for, for the near point, is I call that road trip. You can also call it mapping. And let me move some things around here. So what you need for this is some kind of analog map. And um, I, have, I have all these things on my desk. My desk is not that big. So here's a map. I was just in Northern California at my student case. So it's the map of one of these tourist maps, right? And it's nice to make it, put it, obviously we'll do this on a table or you put it on a, on a kind of surface if it's a, one of those foldable maps. But this is one of those tourist maps and that works as well. So I see this is Pacific Grove in California here. And you don't want to do this, like if you're very far-sighted, you don't want to do this with a map that's super tiny. Here's an example of a map like this. This is like, if you live, ever lived in Los Angeles, the infamous Thomas Guide, the print is very, very small here. See, like, this is very small. Um, but do maybe pick, pick an area where you want to go, like something that makes you happy. Um, here's a, another one. This is in German. This is about America, but it's a German map. So this has like the bigger roads. So it doesn't matter, but you want to have a map that has uh, names of cities, like maybe bigger. Black and white is always easier, but you know, so don't use a topographical map. Use a map that has words on it or street names or uh, town names or something like that. And then what you need is some kind of pointer. So I like to use, uh, this is just a barbecue stick, like it wouldn't, and I'd like to point uh, or paint the, the tip in a color, like, you know, this is just a Sharpie, or this is also really great. These are little cocktail sticks because they also stimulate your periphery. And again, I, Kind of, I don't know if you can see it here. You, I kind of painted the, the top a little bit red. And what you basically do is, again, you can do this with a really big map on the floor or on a big table. I'm trying to do this here at my desk. But you basically um, drive your little car, your little pointer on this. You go on a road trip, right? You, you're kind of moving, and I'm trying to do this reversed here. You're moving your little pointer. You're looking at the tip linking and breathing, and then you're driving around. You're not really trying to read anything. You're just moving around. And as you do this, maybe you become aware of the oppositional movement, right? That you're right now, I'm before this intersection, and now I'm crossing the intersection. So you notice that the map seems to be moving the oppositional way um, from your attention and your pointer. And you keep your, you keep your attention on this. And that's why I like to paint the tip. You keep your attention on the little tip. So. Like, let's say, where do we have a good example? Like, here's a big town, let's say. So as I'm going down, as I'm going south here, right? So this town is in front of me, it's in front of me, it's in front of me. Now it's behind me. Now I cross that town. So noticing that oppositional movement, blinking and breathing. If you have a big map, what's also nice is to put a lot of, um, do I have them here? Colorful post-it stickers, you know, if you have one on the big, to kind of stimulate your peripheral vision so that you're not, this is not about getting sucked into the central focus or the central vision and not paying attention. Much like in real driving, you, you know you, your attention is on the tip, right? On where you are on this road, but at the same time, you're noticing the whole peripheral field. So this is road trip. You know, you can go anywhere in the world, especially when now with COVID, it's fun to, to go anywhere in the world. Um, use maps that, oh, here's the thing that I forgot to say. So as you're relaxing at the near point, and again, do this without glasses or weaker glasses, as you're relaxing, here's the Thomas Guide, you, you know, and you're just moving, looking at the pointer, you might suddenly see some words pop out really clear. That happened to me when I first learned this, I was far-sighted. So you're not making an effort to read anything, you're just focusing on the movement, noticing the oppositional flow, you know, driving around in your little, in your little car here, and, suddenly you might see some words pop out at you because you're not trying to read anything. So this is great for press myopia. Also good for myopia if you, um, if you have a distance, say your distance of clarity is very, very short, you can do this at a, at a distance where you're a little bit in your blur zone. So that could also be a really great practice for myopia. 
All right, road trip. The next one um, is connect the dots. So you've all done this as a kid and I have to have all my books here. So you can either just draw your own connect the dots or you can just, this is the thing, go to the kid's store, go to the bookstore. You know, they have these, they have all these, uh, you know, this is like a book. I think I bought this. Yeah, I bought this in Germany. It's, uh, you know, it's one of mine. It's one of those, one of those books, right? And you can even make, you can make photocopies. But you, you've seen these kind of things. So this does several things. First of all, you, you know, you start with, again, central focus. You're looking at here, number one. This is where you're going to start. Then you're, you're moving your attention, where is number two? But you focus on the one spot while you have the peripheral field. And then you're moving to number three. So you keep going. And this is a really, really great practice you know, similar to scanning and counting, but here you're not counting, you're just connecting the dots and you're drawing the picture. So this is a really fun one. Um, these books are really cheap. You can get them at any of those, you know, bookstores. Um, another version of that, that is a, so this one is really great to do. You have to have enough clarity to read the little numbers, of course, but again, do this without Rika, with weaker glasses or no glasses if you can, um, in a distance where maybe it's a little bit blurry, but not like you're not trying to do this, right? That's that would be counterproductive. Um, the next one is, you know, basically it's this, you've all done these puzzles. It's like finding these words. This is another book I bought at, you know, years and years and years ago at the, what is it, that cheap table at the bookstore where you, they have all these discount offers. But this is uh, here for the younger ones of you, Pokemon characters, right? This has Bible, Bible uh, words in the kitchen. It has like all kinds of topics, presidents, American states, and they have conveniently, you know, you have all the names, but this is really great because you're doing quick scanning. You're moving your attention. You're shifting your focus without trying to shift your focus because you're finding these words. So you're looking, while you're looking at the letters, you're not looking at each letter separately, right? You're moving really quickly much like you would in the long swing or shifting, but you're also seeing the context. You're not seeing one letter, you're noticing one letter as, at the time as clear as, but you're seeing the whole, you're finding these connections. So this is a really great way to do. You can also, if you're fast-sighted and you have a photocopier, it, maybe they even have these in bigger, or you can enlarge them like, you know, 200, 300%, so you can make them bigger. And maybe, or if you're near side, you can stick it on the wall. So you can definitely do, you know, enlarge these things too. And then this is not as official practice, but I like I like these kind of again from the from the cheap table at the bookstore optical puzzles. There's so many like cool little games in these books, and it's fun to do with kids. Visual illusions, um, I you know, and I haven't done this like, but you know, doing these labyrinths. I mean, any of these things is really great to do um, because you're not. It's not about being correct or wrong. It's having fun playing these games. So any of these. Kind of puzzle books is a great thing to do, even if you're near sight and you want to just expand that area of clarity a little bit. So, so the next two practices are really about um, your peripheral vision. And let me show you. So one of them, and this is from Mia Schneider, a vision teacher in uh, Northern California. Um, this is, I don't know what he calls it. I call it the center patch or the Mia Schneider patch. You can use a post-it. You know, this one depends on how greasy your skin is, but you just you just put this in the center of your vision. Um, and if that doesn't stick, you know, I, I have this and I don't have my, here's my masking tape. You can cut out and you can try different widths. So um, I have everything from, this is two inches, three inches and four inches. And then you can use masking tape. Let me just show you real quick. You know, this doesn't hurt your skin, but you use masking tape and you, it's not that easy to put it right in the center when you do it yourself. Um, because your dominant eye might be, decide that it wants to see more. But here we go. And you can leave the bottom open or you can tape this too. I know it doesn't look, it looks, it looks very sexy, right? <laughs> um, and then you wanna, you know, so you can do this and just walk around and, most people, especially with me inside this time, this is really relaxing. I want to take this off to, or at least remove this at the bottom so you can hear me. But most people with me inside this time, this really relaxing because it really lets you uh, allow your peripheral vision that we so often shut down and we're so focused on that central vision. And now that you cannot see anything in the center, it's really about movement. 
So once you feel comfortable with this, I'm going to make it a little looser so you can hear me. Okay. Now you can add additional things. You can have, um, you can throw like I have a bean bag here. You know, you can throw a bean bag back and forth. You can use a tennis ball. You know, this is a tennis ball. Something brightly colored. Oops. Or um, this, or you know, this is another little squishy ball, a colorful ball. You can also. This is something really cool in general. You know, these are the balls. I don't know if you've seen them. You let me take this off for a second. But these are the balls that you um. You can attach them to your hand. So this is a great one when you're by yourself. So they have a little strap. I can't remember where I got this, but I think, you know, they have these sometimes in the 99 cent store. It's called return ball, this one, return ball. But basically when you do this, let me stick this back on. When you do this thing, the ball is not gonna, you know, when you, when you throw this, the ball is not gonna, like, let's say I'm dropping it, right? Now, it's just attached to my arm and I can get it back. You don't have to run around. Um, however, the running around could also be good for your peripheral vision. Anyway, this is this is uh, the Mia Schneider patch. So you can get more, you can get better and better. You can throw the ball up in the air. You can play this with a partner. If you have a partner, you can do this back and forth. Um, so this is, this is a really great way to stimulate your peripheral vision. Um, I've done this on hikes. And we did it with a post-it um, sticker where we left the bottom open, but basically, you know, let's say we do it this way with a post-it. And so you still have the bottom, so you still have peripheral vision on the bottom, but you're really allowing your proprioception, your body sense, your balance, your peripheral vision is, which is so underutilized, right? So you're allowing this, and this obviously is really great to do without glasses, but you wanna be safe. You wanna make sure that you're safe, that you're not doing this. Uh, you know, in a condition. Don't do this when you're driving, please. Um, all right. And the next one, this is also one I love to do, especially with kids. So if you have dominoes or you have playing cards or any other kind of thing where you can look for similarities, like even memory, you know, memory, the game where you have two of the same. I bought these cards a long time ago in England. And these are the really, for little kids, they're big, big, big cards with dominoes. They have, here, this is for Trisha. They have the kittens. So they basically have these numbers, right? They have these numbers. But on the back, they have dominoes. And the way you would do it, you basically put them all around the room on the floor. And now, th and this is a great thing. I didn't mention that earlier. This is a great thing you can do as a game where you time it. You know, either you time yourself, how long it takes you, or you can have several people play against each other. But like, let's say one person has to collect all the, the dominoes with a six on it, and the other one, um, actually, maybe that doesn't work because maybe the other one has a three and there's a domino with this. Well, actually, it does work. There's one with a six and a three, and then whoever sees it first gets that card. So, I mean, this is not about stressing you out, but this is a really, like, again, I'm showing these cards. These are really nice because they're very big. So this is great when you're nearsighted. Black and white, highest contrast. Um, you can, you know, again, make it fun. Like this is what I do with children. When I work with children in my practice, it's everything we do is a game. Everything is a game. You can't be like, you know, even when you do palming with children, you tell them a story. So it's not like, you know, do the long swing. The, you embed the long swing in, in certain movements of being on the trampoline. But anyway, so having playing cards, you can say, you know, find all the hearts find all the, um, the, the spades or find all the queens or whatever whatever you want to do. But that's what I mean. You can use almost anything in your household for your vision improvement practice. All right. So that's the, um, the, the peripheral vision stimulator because in peripheral vision here is really great because you're going to have, it's like scanning and counting, but quicker in a bigger area, right? Where you just find these things. Um, all right. And so the last three we're going to do are really focusing on fusion binocular vision, um, eye-hand-eye coordination, at least the very last one is hand-eye coordination. So fusion is when how your eyes work together. And you've heard of maybe converging and diverging, and that's converging is looking up close, crossing your eyes, diverging is looking in the distance, and you can use your fingers. Some of you have might done this before, but you can do the little hot dog, which I think is fun. So you're holding your fingers, in your visual field and you either, you're not looking at your fingers because if you look at your fingers, you will only see two. But ever, we wanna see a third one floating in the middle that looks like a little sausage. 
And the way you do it is you look in the distance beyond your fingers, right? You, you want to look beyond maybe above or below your finger. I usually like look above and you see a little sausage, a little hot dog floating in between. And then you can do the opposite. That might be harder for some of you than crossing your eyes. So you cross your eyes and now I have another little hot dog floating in the middle. Um, crossing your eyes might be more challenging for some of you um, unless you have a focal point, but you, the key here is not to look at your fingers, to either look beyond or look in front. And then when you can do that, you can quickly switch back and forth. So I'm looking, I'm diverging, looking far, seeing a hot dog. Now I'm converging and I'm diverging and going back and forth really quickly. So you can do other things. You don't need fingers. You can use dots on a piece of paper. You can use uh, chopsticks. You can use anything, but the fingers are always with you. So, and that's also fun to play with kids. Um, the next one also, you can, I use fingers for that one. It's, I call it the finger gate or, or near far jumps. But basically you hold the two fingers now in a row in line, and it doesn't, you can, you can do different distances, but you hold them in line with your nose and you're looking at one finger. And I like to use a third object in the distance. Um, that could be a tree if you're in nature, that could be a water bottle, it could be anything. So if you have three objects, and let's assume here I have my, I'm putting this here so you can see it. Hopefully it doesn't, maybe let me close it. I don't want to spill it on my computer. But let's say I have the water bottle and then I have my finger. So now I look at the first finger, I see two fingers in the middle, I see two water bottles. Now I'm shifting my attention to this, to the, this finger, the one that's further away. Now I see two fingers in front and I see two water bottles. Now I look at the water bottle and I see four fingers. I see two here, two here. So you can move back and forth, back and forth. This improves your fusion. And it's just a really great way to, um, to if you have strabismus, amblyopia, and initially you might not see the doubling. In that case, it might be useful to how to do when you have fingers, right? But maybe uh, close one eye or squint one eye shut, and then you see how the finger jumps. Um, when you do that, right, you see how the finger jumps around, and then that can stimulate um, that vision. And if you really can't see it, you can also imagine seeing two fingers and then practice it. Or you can use, um, you can practice with occluders, right? Where you just, occluders are basically glasses. These are from the 99 cents. So all I did, I popped one lens out, I spray painted this one black, you can use duct tape, but basically occluders give you vision in one eye and then they block the other one, but they leave um, peripheral vision. You can obviously use your hand, but then you wouldn't be able to use fingers. So. You, obviously, if you do this, you only see one finger of each, right? There's no way to double it, but you can practice that. And then it's a little annoying. It's easier to, to squint one eye shut. And then you can, you know, or, or use other objects, maybe put some chopsticks or some pencils. You know, let's say you have a little bit of uh, some mold or something. You can, not mold, um, what do you call it? The little, some sticky putty, right? You can, you can use, you could potentially use two pencils and secure them somehow on your desk so that they don't fall over, maybe with some, yeah, some Play-Doh or something like that. And then you could do it where you, um, if you had the two pencils, again, I can't really do the pencils, and, but if you had the pencils that say there's two or maybe three in a row, then you can do this, you know, you can cover one eye and you see how it jumps. So that's another way if you have amblyopia or you don't see the, the doubling. And the last game, this is one of my favorites. So this is, I almost have to shoot a separate video uh, because I need a partner. I, I'm by myself here on this video. So the last one is a beanbag toss. You can use, I like beanbags. You can, because they don't bounce away, but you can technically use a ball. This is a really light um, black and white. It's light, so it doesn't fly as far. Um, my sister made these beanbags. I can't sew. She, she's great. But you, you can make these bigger. Black and white is really good if you have vision challenges or neon color or bright colors. But the way this works, so you have, a, you have to have a partner for this game. A kid, a willing husband or wife um, or somebody else. And you will start pretty close together. And let me see if I can turn this down. But basically, you start throwing the beanbag with two hands. So you throw it two hands to the other person, you throw back and forth, back and forth. That's usually pretty easy, right? Then you do it dominant hand, like you just throw right hand or whatever that is. So the, and, and you have the other hand behind your back. So you just throw with one hand. So this is hand-eye coordination, right? Catching, you do the other hand. 
All right. Next level. Now, this makes it more challenging. You put your occluders on, or you can, if you don't have occluders, you can use an eye patch. Eye patch limits your, is obviously no peripheral vision, but you can totally use an eye patch too. So now, this one is pretty tight actually. Just realized this is a new one. So now you, you're starting the same way. You're starting with two hands back and forth, back and forth. Now you don't have depth perception. So it's a little bit like, ooh, you know, the, pay, pay attention to the, to the moving object. Obviously the peripheral vision and maybe your other friend throws the ball over, or the beanbag over there, you have to jump. So now you do, and then you do it again, one hand, then the other hand. It gets more and more challenging. Then you obviously switch the patch or the occluders. I'm gonna use occluders. So it, uh, it's, the iPad is a little tight. You know, then you do this and then you do the same thing. You start with two hands and the, the, it's really when your eye is occluded and you have that hand, you have to really, you know, look and also improve your, trust your peripheral vision. So you do all the different combinations and then you can level it up. Um, I usually recommend again with both eyes together, you can level it up by throwing, first of all, you can get further and further apart from each other, right? Maybe you start with a meter or a yard away and then you can, you and your partner can go like really far away from each other. That makes it a lot more challenging. Or you can use two bean yards and you would initially throw them parallel to the other person like this, back and forth, back and forth. Then you can throw them crossing. You can, my right hand throws to their right hand. And so it goes like they cross in the middle. Right, you can do that, and then if that's easy, you can then start your clutter. So this beanbag game has like no limit of difficulty, right? You can make it, you know. I, I guess you could have a third beanbag, but I don't know. Then you only have two hands. Another thing that I never learned, but that's really um, my one of my mentors, Peter Mansfield. He wrote a fabulous book. Is juggling. So juggling is a really, really great way to improve your vision, especially if you're nearsighted, but because it's that movement hand-eye coordination. I never um, actually learned it. And my, my, my internet seems to be a little slow. But basically, uh, juggling, um, and I bought the little um, set that's called Klutz or something. It has kind of beanbag type thingies, but they're square. So, um, you know, juggling boards. So that's another thing you can practice juggling without your glasses. That's also a really great way to improve your vision. I don't have that here right now, and I can't juggle, so I can't demonstrate it. But again, having fun, this is really the key message. See the world as your vision playground. Understand that all these, doesn't matter if you do scanning and counting, if you connect the dots, you, you see one thing best, you have the peripheral vision, all these principles, you know, colors, right? Color of the day, paying attention to the present moment, um, the oppositional movement, right? And all these things that I shared with you, you can easily write in a comment 10 new games that you can make up once you understand the ideas behind these things, right? So movement, play, um, hand-eye coordination, exploring different distances, um, even if your vision is a little blurry at that distance, that's really what it's about. And don't see these as a chore, but again, think of children. That's why if you go to children's stores or books, like children's stores for me are like, Everything I see is like, how, like, oh my God, I can use this for vision improvement. Like, it's almost like there's no limit how you can use toys or games as a vision improvement. Um, yeah, as a vision improvement practice. So I hope you found this inspiring and maybe got some of your own ideas that you can use to, um, if you have kids or not, maybe you have grandchildren, get them off the darn screens and play in the real world, in the 3D world, because um, the motor skills, the motor skills and the hand-eye coordination only develop when you practice these things. If they always on these two-dimensional screens that I go for us adults do, right? We lose these abilities. So playing these games and maybe, maybe for the next 10 days, this will be my suggestion, pick, do one of them like on day one and then do another one on the next day. So explore these different things. And the ones that are challenging for you are gonna be really good. And also anything that's just fun, right? But a little bit of a challenge and you will see how quickly the brain learns and how quickly it will be easier to play these games. So let me just look, um, Petra and James are live. Um, no questions right now. I, if you have any questions, otherwise I will stop the YouTube live and my Clear Vision Club members get to hang out with me on Zoom. Um, the Clear Vision Club is a small community I have 
I put under the um, in the comments on YouTube. I also put other resources I have. You can download. Follow me here on YouTube. Make sure you su subscribe to the um, click the little bell icon that when I go live, you get notified. And um, uh, let me see. Next week, next week we don't have a I don't have a topic yet for next week. If you have a wish, then comment underneath this video. Any questions? I will go in here and I will answer any questions. So. I, I don't go here every time, every day, every moment, because I want to make sure my eyes get some screen rest. But I will answer all these questions at some point, And I usually try to do it within a couple of days. So um, post your requests or let me know what you're interested in learning. And I hope this was fun. So forget the word eye exercises. Think of games and fun. And that's how you actually improve your vision. Because right, it's more fun than doing some stupid exercise. Because last thing I want to say, eyes are not abs. This is my favorite saying, because we can hate, do 100 crunches, hate every second of it, and, and our abs will still get stronger. But if you just do mechanical eye exercises without actually relaxing or relaxing and understanding the principle, you're not really going to improve your vision. So that it's not about doing hours of exercises. All right. Um, I don't see any questions on YouTube, so we're going to end the YouTube now, and I see you guys next Wednesday. Okay, and the